Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 30th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I am recording from New York City, New York. Typically on Windows environments, you don't find compilers by default, unlike on many Unix environments. So malware, as a result, often arrives pre-compiled as an executable. Xavier found a couple of exceptions of this behavior and they rely on jsc.exe. That's a JScript compiler that is part of the .NET framework. And well, uh, most Windows systems do have the .NET framework installed. With that, they have jsc.exe installed. They also then typically have msbuild dot exe installed which actually allows you to automatically build applications similar to the make command in unix and while it doesn't happen often xavier ran across a couple samples that took advantage of these tools most likely the purpose here is to again obfuscate the attack to evade antivirus scanners because they usually only look for the executables they don't look for the source code in this case actually the code was delivered base 64 encoded probably to make it easier to transfer but also possibly to further Obfuscate it. Now, as Xavier points out, jsc.exe and msbuild.exe, yes, they are on uh, pretty much all corporate machines because they all have the .NET framework installed, but they're not usually used. So uh, these are two indicators that you can use uh, to detect possible malicious behavior if uh, these uh, two executables are run on a system in your network. Now, if you are into home automation, there are typically kind of two ways how you can control your home automation system while you are away from home. And that's often one of the attractive features here. First one typically requires some kind of a cloud setup of the manufacturer where your home automation system connects to the manufacturer's APIs. And then your mobile application or whatever you use to remote control your home automation system is connecting to these same APIs. While problematic in some ways, it usually beats the other option and that's where you are opening up your firewall at home and you're directly exposing your home automation system to the outside world. Well, back in February, the German Information Security Office, CERT Bund, uh, went ahead and took a look at home automation systems exposed in Germany, and they found 6,000 home Matic systems that were exposed and not properly configured so anybody could access uh, these systems. So they actually started a concerned effort trying to notify the users of exposed systems. Well, uh, the results are in now after about half a year. Well, they were able to reach and correct about 3,000 of these 6,000, so about half of the systems. This is, I think, sort of about average. Uh, we have done this uh, ourselves in the past. It's really difficult to notify users of vulnerable systems, in particular, if you don't sort of have any pre-existing relationship with these users. Often easier to do this over manufacturers or such, which uh, may already know these users and uh, maybe the users actually are coming to their websites occasionally to look for updates or manuals. One thing in particular about these homematic systems is also that they're a little bit more sort of offered by professional installers while they're also being sold via retailers to hobbyists who would like to install them. It's quite likely that many of these vulnerable systems were actually installed by professional installers. And talking about authorities trying to fight against cybercrime and vulnerabilities, we have another sort of interesting case here from Europe. This was a collaboration between the antivirus company Avast and the French National 
police. What happened here was that the target was a Monero Bitcoin mining bot. And of course, we have seen many of them in the recent past. In this particular case, the command control infrastructure was for a large part located in France, which is why Avast went to the French police for help. Now, French police went ahead and took down the command control servers, also analyzed the content of these servers, of course, which is very typical for these takedowns. But then they actually got approval from prosecutors, apparently, to go a step further and and they did replace the command control infrastructure with servers that would actually remove the malware from infected systems. This is something that is usually not done in these takedowns in part because there's always a fear that removing software from infected systems may actually cause some damage here. Also sort of interesting here that most of the infected systems were actually outside of France in South America and Mexico. Well, that's it for today. And by the way, second week of October, I'll be in Chicago teaching at the Seam Summit that Sans runs that week. I'll be teaching intrusion detection. So if you're interested in Seams or intrusion detection, well, uh, take a look at the summit and the class. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.